Hi guys, today we're going to take a quick look at device twinning on Azure and look at why you might want to use this as a feature on Azure for configuring devices. There's a lot of things that device twinning brings to the table, but there's also some trade-offs that it has. And we're going to try to talk through what those are first, and then I'll show you how to do this in the Azure portal with a device sample that I have on my local machine here. So let's talk about why you might want to uh, use twinning in the first place. It starts really with a device and a device has a lot of different kinds of data associated with it. It has the data that it sends, which is typ typically called telemetry, which is really not what we do with twinning, but it has things like configuration data and state data that I'm interested in. And um, if I wanted to get that data, I would just simply query the device. I have a client and it just asks for that data from the device. And it's going to say, hey, send me your latest configuration or, hey, send me your um, your state data. And then the device would just oblige and send that back to the client. In an ideal world, all of my devices are online. All of my devices have high speed networks attached to them. And all of them have low latency connections and I can access all those devices at once. So if I had a single device, maybe that's not a big deal. If it's on the lo local, same local network, I could do that. But in reality, my devices are probably going to be spread out all over the world with different kinds of networking and different kinds of constraints around them that makes querying just a fleet of devices impractical from a client. So I might have three devices or you know, maybe 300 devices or 3000 devices or 3 million devices. But at the end of the day, what ends up happening is I have so many devices on the network that I can't possibly query them all in one query. I'd have to issue an individual query to each device and then wait for those queries to come back. And if they did come back, then I would have to collate them and then do some kind of actions on them. And that's also assuming that those are online. If one is offline, then I'm going to have gaps in my data. And that is simply not something I can deal with. I might just be waiting and waiting and waiting. And eventually that device times out. So this could not only be slow, it's just very impractical from the state of just trying to maintain devices in this manner. So that's why we do twinning. And twinning is really going to solve this problem, but it's going to have some trade-offs that we're going to speak to. So let's look at how this works. I have the same basic components where I have a device that has the configuration and state data that I'm interested in. And I have a client that's interested in that data for querying it. But in the middle, I have something that brokers that exchange, which is IoT Hub. Now, the IoT Hub stores a copy of the data from the device in IoT Hub, which is why it's called a twin. It's basically a copy of this data right here. And this then allows the device over here, the client, to query that data uh, fleet wide without having to go to every single device to get that data. The trade off, though, is that there might be some kind of lag between data that's sent to a device and data that is received from a device. And that lag is why a, a device twin is typically going to have two different sets of data. It's going to have what is sent to the device, which is called desired data, which is typically desired configuration data, maybe desired state data. And it's going to have reported data, which is what the device actually reported back. And so this might happen once or twice and the reported data might come back sometime later. And there could be a lag between what was sent as desired data and what came back as reported data. It might be the case that I get something that's reported, but I never send anything that was desired. So there could be discrepancies in these two data sets, but the device twin on the IoT hub actually stores both desired and reported. And it's gonna basically timestamp that and it's gonna add a version uh, to that. And so the version is basically just gonna increment it. You know, basically this is a new version of the data, uh, be it desired or reported data, but it's also going to timestamp it so you know when the desired data was you know, sent and then also when the, uh, the device's reported data was sent. And what this allows us to do is compare what was sent from the IoT Hub as desired and what was reported back from the device as reported data. So if I sent something, say, today, this is your new configuration, and the device reported back something at a later date that was the same property, but at a later date, I know that the device uh, received this uh, desired data, but it never you know, reacted to that new configuration. It didn't update the configuration. And so that basically means there's something out of sync, or maybe it was the case that 
uh, something came back in the reported data that is showing you know something updated on the device that was sent throughout some some other channel, and uh, I need to react to that and then send some kind of desired you know, state configuration back to that or something like that. There's a lot of things you can do with this, uh, but basically it allows you to track what was sent to the device through desired and then also track what was reported from the device using reported data. And sometimes the desired will have fields that reported has uh, doesn't have on it. And sometimes reported will have fields that desired doesn't have on it. So it doesn't have to be used for parity between desired and reported. It doesn't mean that they have to match exactly or anything like that. It's just depending on how you use it. This is designed to allow you to have both what was sent and what was received so that you can see it kind of out of sync with one another and also in an asynchronous fashion because you aren't able to query all the devices in the fleet at one time and like we just tried to uh, show you because that's just not practical so device twinning trades off with that by using this desired and reported scheme to store both the desired and reported data in the iot hub so that you can then report on that using queries against that data and so this allows me to see everything that is stored from all the twinning data, be it desired, reported, or both across all devices and also have performant queries and be able to update that data quickly as well if I need to uh, update data on a desired um, if I wanna send that out to devices. So I'm here in my Azure IoT Hub and I have a device on this. I just have one for this demo, but if I had all of my devices, I could see them here. and. Uh, with this particular device, I can drill down into this and I can see its twin data. So there's a lot of other metadata that, that I have on this, but the, the data that I'm going to be most interested in is down here under properties. And this is where I see desired and reported data. So currently there isn't anything that's been sent by way of desired data. So the IoT Hub has not published any kind of desired state to this device. And so that's why it's at version one. But the device has reported data back from the device. So it says that my current you know, reported state is just basically reporting a single property, this pull frequency right here, and it's on version four. So basically, whenever this device starts up, it's going to say, here's my reported properties, and it's going to send that back to IoT Hub. And IoT Hub is going to update this reported data right here with the latest version. And so it, this is giving me timestamp data and so on that I can use to say the last time it was updated and I can use that in queries and so on. But this is just showing me where the data is coming in at and it's you know, last version and so on. So if I start this device up, I should be able to see this particular reported data change because it's basically going to report data back in when the device starts. So let's go ahead and start this device up. Let's look at the code first, just a second. Um, this is getting that pull frequency from a settings file because I haven't set it from the twin. So it's basically just going to its default, which is right here in the settings file. So if I go over here and start this device in command prompt, I should be able to see that device data update. So if I go device, um, if I go node device.js, that's going to start this uh, application, rather this device, and it's going to send data up to it, but it says twin data reported. And it's also saying it's got version one for the device configuration that came by in by way of the twinning data, which currently there is nothing on that. So uh, if I go back over here to my uh, twin data and I refresh this, I should see it increment that number. So it's five now. Now, if I change this data, I can send data bound to the device by just change, changing the pole frequency right here. So this is going to use uh, a new value. I'm gonna add it right here under desired. And I'm going to change that to say, let's change it to 3000. So that's gonna change it to basically send data every three seconds. So let's save this. And um, this should update the metadata right there. Last updated version of two. And this should start reporting in at every three seconds now if I change this. So that's about the cadence it get. So, um, it is reporting about every three seconds. So it basically updated the uh, configuration of this device by sending a new twinning property down to it. So it's basically reporting in data every three seconds. So let's stop this and let's start it uh, again. And let's see uh, what it does this time. 
and let's see if it gets a new device. So it got uh, pull frequency of 3000, but that's because it queried for that device's um, uh, state data and it got the desired state as being every three seconds for uh, sending new data. And so this should have reported back and we uh, that, oh, by the way, I'm not pull frequency at 5000 anymore. I'm pull frequency 3000 and I'm on version six. Because when I did update that, it basically uh, meant that it also reported, hey, I got that change. My configuration is updated. And now every time I start that, until I change this configuration again, it's not going to um, version the desired at all. It's going to version the reported every time I start the device. So let's look at one more thing before we go. We've looked at the actual device twin data on a given device, but we can also query that data using queries. Of course, you can do this in the Azure portal, but you can do this through APIs as well. It allows me to use a SQL language to select devices and filter the data based on what's in the device twin. So if I look at the device twin data down here, you can see that this is the same data that we saw on the device that we just looked at. But if I wanted to filter this, I could filter based on the properties. So I, this is basically querying documents. So I can use you know, a select uh, star if I want to, and I can project that data if I want to, but I'm gonna use a where clause where devices.properties, which is the object that I'm interested in right here, uh, dot properties and I can uh, just copy and paste that up here and then I can do desired and if I want to do desired and then I can do poll frequency and just follow the tree there and um, greater than let's say 2000 and so this is going to allow me to query the devices where the the poll frequency on the desired side is greater than 2000 if I said 4000 I'm not going to get any results so that's because it's 3000. If I do equals 3000, then that's going to say it's going to give me back the same data. It's going to give me back the exact same object that I just saw. So this allows me to query it based on the desired properties as well as the reported properties. So you can see that I have a poll frequency in the reported property, uh, reported properties right there. And I can uh, just drop that in and run the same query and I get back the results uh, as well. So this is how you query the data once it's in the device twin. Now, the ability to query the data is what enables me to have performant queries without actually having to go to the device. And so all of my twinning data is cloud side so I can access it quickly and not have to go to every single device in my fleet. If I have thousands of devices, that's just basically impossible. But this allows me to do it very quickly, but I still have to maintain that desired and reported state data in my device twin if I wanna be able to accommodate both sides.